Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill and I am your host. Uh, I am a filmmaker living out in Los Angeles, California. Episode 63 is up and joining me today is Rashi Jane. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, so it was lovely. A good little, little quick redo there for us. And uh, it was it was wonderful. It was great. It was Thank great. You. So thanks for being here. You are. Let me pull out my my quick notes here. I'll go off the top of my head though. You are. Uh, you work in film these days. Yes. You work in the art department as a production designer. Yes. Uh, I believe you're the first production design art person that I've had on the show so far. So I'm very excited. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. Um, and you have a background in architecture too. Uh, you grew up in Mumbai, India, 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 to specify for those, and um, yes. Yeah, so I guess I guess very easy question to start out with. How long have you been in LA? When did uh, how how recent was this move? Um. So, okay, I'll give you a little backstory about great, 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 great. <laughs> um, I did architecture back home till like. 2016 I interned in a construction firm hated it when I say hated it I mean that uh, I was working in a construction firm and I was uh, making I was designing toilets for like six months because when you first walk into a hotel or first walk into a commercial building what if, if you're going to like ba- get a room in a hotel or if you're like actually looking at something would isn't toilet like the first thing you would look at? Oh, is the bathroom good? Is it clean? Is it neat? Is it like, is there enough space for yeah, us? Yeah, yeah. So that is kind of the most important thing in when you design commercial buildings, which I found out when I was working in a construction firm. So I was designing toilets for six months. And I was like, and I was on site. I was overlooking the construction. Um, and I was watching... Uh, Pretty Little Liars and different other sitcoms in my free time because designing toilets was not, it was not six months worth of work. So I was yeah. like, I don't think that I did all this design to, I did I did five years of design to do this. Um, I love architecture. I appreciate a lot of architecture, but I was like, I think I need to do a little more than mm-hmm. this. And um, I was introduced to production design as a concept like three years, two years into doing architecture, but it was never a, oh, I can make like a living out of this, you know? So, and I grew up in Bollywood. Bollywood's huge. Bollywood's awesome. I am Bollywood. <laughs> I like to say that. You sometimes. are Bollywood. Okay. I am Bollywood. Yeah, I know like everything about Bollywood. Okay. Every every person who's there. Like I know all the gossip basically. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. About Bollywood. So, um, so I researched a little bit more about what production design is. Um, I knew one person who had come to U.S. to study production design, so I spoke to her. Um, and then I did my whole research on, okay, what what colleges have production design? What do I, so let's, uh, how can I? So let's pause there for a quick sec. <laughs> I'll interject. Um, for those at home that are unfamiliar with this position, can you clarify what a production designer does and maybe why it attracted you in the first place? Yes. Um a production designer is a person who is responsible for what you see on the camera. So every time you see a movie or a film, um, everything in the background, like the couch is production design. In this case, the couch is production design. The wall is production design, you know. every Anything you see around us is production design. The mics are production design as well. So everything that is, e- everything that you see other than the lighting aspect of it is production design. Essentially, or... All the art that you see. Yeah, we, and so the non-costumes, essentially. The non-costumes. Yeah. Ex- yeah and the non-lights. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else. Yeah, everything else that's art on camera. Okay, yeah, we'll dig a little bit more into that for sure. But, okay, so then... So then I'm... So then I... Uh, c- quickly, I'll, I'll... No, 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 we got time, <laughs> we got time. So then we... So then I researched about colleges... Um, and most colleges had a three-year course, which I did five years of architecture. So I was like, uh, I'm not working. I'm not studying for three more years. So yeah. a lot of colleges went out of my list because of that. Um, I knew that I wanted to either be in L.A. or in New York. Mm-hmm. But the only college in New York was Tisch School of Design, I guess, Tisch Film School. 
um and then there were like six different schools in LA so i applied to all of them and i got into calarts and i took calarts i got scholarship in calarts oh, nice. i got like 50% scholarship so i was like hmm and i actually got into afi as well but i was like scholarship matters more yeah, yeah, yeah. money difference is a lot where i come from so i got into calarts i went there for school and then i started working since the time i've been here i've been here for 5 years now okay 5 years. years okay yeah Yeah, I graduated 2019, been working since then. And yeah, I think I'm doing like decently good. Okay, that's great. Yeah, um and we'll we'll okay, so we'll talk we'll definitely talk about um a lot of things our department, a lot of things in your journey, a lot of things in that realm. <gasps> For now, um I guess uh, maybe we should just talk about that now. Let's sh- I, I, there's like some debating on talking about Los Angeles experience, getting started in the art department and things that you've seen and talking all about that. And I also want to talk about the transitional period of you know kind of deciding to apply for the schools and what was going on back home and and more Bollywood and and a lot of kind of stuff. Um Yeah, and then even growing up to be an architect and how that kind of uh layers into the work you still do. So there's there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> there um is. I guess let's let's stick with okay, what 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 kind of comes out to you the most when all that is laid out? What do you want to grab into? I, I think I want to grab into how architecture helps okay, in great. this. Sure. First, um I think being an architect makes you realize and understand spaces and understand dimensions and understand distance so like i remember when first year in architecture they like the first project all of us got was uh, make your bathroom and nobody knew what size a bathroom is usually in a normal middle class house you know mm-hmm. so we, everybody would make like 10 feet but i remember i had like a 10 feet by 4 feet 10 feet by 6 feet sheet and i like dude this is like an entire room this is not how big a bathroom is you know so the first year was all about understanding spaces understanding dimensions understanding uh understanding the vastness of a space versus the intricacies of the design and i think i think coming with that experience into this field even though even though i i always say this the design for film is um impermanent and you know there are times when it, i have done a lot of builds and there are times when you start you do a build in like five days and then you wrap it up in two hours which is like which for the first time I worked on a I worked on a feature back home so after my architecture internship I was like okay no production designers I, I guess like let me see what this is and let me try this thing out yeah so I worked in I worked on a feature back home in India as an intern when I was doing like everything I was picking up coffees I was going and looking at materials I was uh drawing I was working with the construction um coordinator I was working uh with the PD cuz I was her ki- kind of her personal assistant as well um and I loved it I loved the we were we made this whole uh, we made this whole uh rich house out of a full white It was a completely white house. We made it all green and wallpaper and this and that in like five days. And we shot there for like 20 days. And then we ripped it off in like half a day. And Yeah, de- destroying stuff is pretty easy. Bre- breaking it down. Is yes, the, but it's the, heartbreaking for the first time. You know, like the first time I was doing uh, that, I was like, oh my God, this is what like, th- th- my work is just gone. But, but... I think I've come to I think I've come to love that because the satisfaction of seeing your work close to you in cinema or on YouTube. I do a lot of music videos and commercials as well. So on YouTube or on different platforms within like 3 months of you shooting is another level of satisfaction. Like this feature I worked on as an intern went to Cannes and went to it's got an award there it's on netflix right now mm-hmm. when i see it I, some of my friends see it and they're like oh my god this is such a good do, movie do you want to shout it out what's the oh it's called sir it's on netflix okay nice sir it's about this uh, so we have house help in india it's about this house help is about this lady house help who gets who falls in love with the sir with the owner okay, of the okay. house basically yeah, yeah it's so really kind of like well a 
It was like a forbidden love kind of story. Forbidden love kind of yeah, story. Yeah, but it touches sure. on like a few topics of because she's a widow, but and she's from a village and she's not of the same class. Yeah. So it touches on all of those topics, which yeah. is a huge thing as well. But yeah, so from that so I think architecture is so important to me and being an architect helps helps me think differently in a lot of situations, helps me think um helps me all like if you talk to if you talk to me if you talk a room to me I, it automatically like starts building in my head you know yeah, yeah. like you talk about an idea and i'm like yeah i know how we can do it you know i exactly know how we can do it and then and then it goes to discussions and then you have changes and then you have things but i think architecture is what got that sense of build inside yeah, you yeah just space you know? just, just space it yeah. just massing it out so uh, i am I think I'm very grateful that I'm an architect and it like helps me in every aspect like I can do renders I can do models I can do all my um all like if you if you want to if cuz a lot of times everybody cannot visualize the way you visualize it take it took me a lot of education to visualize the way I can you know mm-hmm. so but I can if you talk to me I can put it on paper and I can like give it to you in a 3D world way which we can play around with so I that's because of architecture because I already knew that that was not something I came here and learned so that was so I, and I'm a nerd in architect like I know every big architect and I would like go look at their buildings I would travel to look at their buildings yeah. and I've traveled a lot as well so I would uh all of all of Europe or Europe, however you'll call it here, were different back home. Yeah. But all of Europe is architecture paradise again because it's so beautiful. Yeah, I've never been to Europe, but I, I hear good things. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are times when I've like taken my parents just to go see a building because I'm like I've studied about this building. Let's go see it. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's been, it's yeah. Architecture is very close to my heart. And it's always going to be. It's like it's what I do, kind of. I and don't it, ever think I'm not an artist. I mean, it's all know? around us all the time. And now exactly. you, and now you get. T- so okay. So the the current. So is the current goal slash plan to live in our department for ever, or are you plan on going back to architecture at some point, or what? Not to not to jump to the yeah. I think I've found my happy medium in because I think architecture. I, as much as I love it, it takes years to develop a building. It takes years to develop a concept. It takes years to get to it versus in a music video or a commercial or a movie. Um, movie takes longer, but I guess music videos and commercials um, would have a closer, quicker turnaround. And I think the satisfaction of looking at your work close to you or available to you anywhere you are in the world and available to everybody that I know in different parts of the world, you know, on the same platform is something that's very um, exciting and very... Yeah. It makes me very happy. So I think I found my happy medium of design with film. Plus, I'm like, I'm all about Bollywood. So someday I'm going to design in Bollywood. Um, I don't think now's the time. Uh, but yeah, I think I don't think I'm, I can do anything else in the film world other than art. Yeah, no, that <laughs> makes sense. No, like, okay, yeah, because, uh, yeah, you put a lot of work into the design of a a set, and then it gets captured, and then, yeah, that, that makes it makes sense. Like, the, I'm trying to imagine an architect and how, how you get the, um, the satisfaction of the work, and people seeing the work is the idea of why it's, I mean, it helps, it helps everybody, really. It helps the, the cinematographer light the space and come up with ideas. It helps... I mean, the best sets play into story too. Like we can talk about how it's not just filling a space; it's there's purpose to everything that you're doing in the space. It's never filling the space. It's always a character building. Tomorrow, if I'm designing a room from a person who is uh, like me, you know, like I, I, there are certain colors I associate myself with. There are certain. Um, kinds of textures that I like you know I'm not a person who would like to li- I'm not a bright red person but I'm more of a maroon person you know I'm more of a uh, teal green blue person um, so my room right now is painted green and that's what happens in every story every story is or every film is character building so every space is is a space for that person. You know how this is your place. It has something that belongs to you, which represents you as a person, right? Yeah. So 
it's the same thing with every character in a movie you're making a space for the person so i think every time i get a script or every time i i'm working on a short or a feature we just finished a feature uh, i just finished we it, it's me and my friend who did yeah. it it was in indie it was amazing one of the best sets i've worked on and it was where movie. it was in la okay yeah, yeah. oh so it was in indie okay so indie you said. Yeah. yeah not india <laughs> like it was in India. It was an in you know it was an indie feature. Nice. I just finished it uh, like a week back, and uh, one of the characters in that were is uh um is paranoid of the outside world. They don't want to get out at all of their space. They like things in a certain way. Everything is in order. So how could I make their space? a space which is comfortable with them yet creepy for the audience to look at you know that okay yeah it's like different and weird yeah what was the genre uh it was comedy it was a comedy it was a comedy okay it's an interesting film it's a good it's an interesting film yeah um but yeah one of the characters is i not without giving away too much about the film <laughs> uh but just creating that space for them you know uh creating a space where everything is super h- how do you make it look like everything they do is in order and everything they want is all their all their equipments are in one place and all their pens same colored pens on one are in one container and pens are in another container so everything how everything is classified is what their character is so basically in the end it's all about character building in yeah. the movie always yes because i was going to say on how much it helps the actor in the space too like because you are working with the creative team such as like the director and, and potentially cinematographer too depending on how you're planning out compositions and shots and stuff so then almost almost like the last person that comes in the room is the actor and then they're like oh this is this is my this is my me as the character and this is my living space and then they pull inspiration from all the work that you've done which must be nice too. Yeah, oh my god, it's so nice to always like have an actor come in and be like, "Oh, okay, all right." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. we did it good, didn't we? <laughs> now work with it. Be No be, more just just don't make us look bad now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Great. Um I want to talk a little bit about all right. Let's jump into what it was like getting your start in art when you in Los Angeles. So you're in a new town. Um, you're going to college. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And and how did you? How did it? Oh my God! Ha- it was yeah. so different. It was so different. It was so difficult because I've always lived um, with my parents back home in India. Okay. So at 23, uh, I was like, okay, now I got to do this with my life. So. let's figure it out so i moved here and i moved here with one of my best friends back home uh, ritika she's also a production mm-hmm. designer amazing by Shout the way out. <laughs> uh, but uh, her and i moved here together so it was nice to have somebody who i know and who's familiar and who's from family here with me um but it was equally difficult for both of us because we had no idea you know like from starting a bank account to going and get your getting your own groceries we live very luxuriously in india so like you have people mostly to do everything for you you okay. know like um um house like we grew up so different i was just talking to my friend yesterday that we grew up so differently from here we like going and getting your own groceries is, is not a real thing there you know like it's not what and yeah cuz the population is so much and the amount of the amount of uneducated population is also so much that there are women and there are men who just know how to do a certain things you know the men who just know how to construct so most of the people who do construction when i was working in the construction firm are not super they come from middle class to lower class families um uh, but they're doing that for that's their living uh and the same with people who sell vegetables people who sell yeah. uh, capitalism is not a whole thing there like you won't have rats and wands at every corner there there are smaller uh, more um you uh, what do you call it that uni uni like a one cell house whatever so like a you understand what i'm saying like a studio right? or like, like a not a studio or like a one person like a s- business like everybody has their own business uh, a guy so at her back home my mom has like people to call for certain vegetables certain okay, okay. you know like she would call she would call some uncle 
bhaiya no no girl we call them bhaiya she would call some bhaiya and he would she'll be like i want this 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 and it'll be at a house in like 2 hours you know yeah so we live very differently so from getting groceries to getting a bank account to figuring out to like driving here also is so different i yeah. come from a place mm-hmm. where traffic's crazy um so when people complain about air traffic i don't know i don't understand it's it. a, it's a different it's a different <laughs> it's a different crazy it is a sure. different crazy yeah. it is a different crazy here so uh just from from all of that to being here to being in a place where i have no family i have nobody i have to make my own to suddenly make new friends uh yeah learn the culture all learn that stuff. the culture all of a sudden i'm also a vegetarian so i don't eat um and i'm a, like a picky vegetarian like my friend calls me a different category of food you know like there's a non vegetarian vegetarian vegan and rashi that's what my friend says oh, all okay, the time nice. so um so just juggling with all of that uh figuring all of that out i think the first few months were um uh, pretty very difficult in terms of how to do life you know like and how to like and the terms because we grew up with uk english the terms which we use in india which are not used here and the terms which are used here which i'm like okay now you say you don't say number plate you say license plate for a car license plate you yeah, know yeah. so things like that it was unlearning and learning at every point um so the first year was all about that and then i got out and then i started working through facebook groups like getting into our department again i think i think people most people have met her are just nice and want to take a chance on you are and are trying to look for good people around you um and that's been that's been great so i started applying to all these random f- people on facebook groups and i applied to people from afi people from chapman and i think my second semester of school i got into i i, I was production designing in afi film um and sent, once you do one thing then people look at your work and then they call you again so yeah it's worked out well for me that way you do one thing and then be like oh you can do this and i remember like my first film that i did here the producer and the director were like oh you can make 3d models people here don't do that and i'm like what like yeah three i can make 3d models like yeah. it's basic and that's where architecture comes in right because i knew already knew how to do it and I, it was not something that i learned after i came here um it really helped me have that edge i guess yeah it's people. a it's an elevated uh yeah if form it, for a short film like yeah. people don't do that for a short film yeah, you know yeah it's 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 a luxury. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Skilled skilled <laughs> production designer up for your short. Yeah. <laughs> so then um, I started with that and then I think after graduation I reached out to everybody uh, all the two year in two, for two years I worked a lot for free. I worked as a PA on a lot of things. Um I art directed for a lot of different shorts, different web series here and there, you know. And as soon as I graduated I reached out to everybody. that i had cuz i had so because i'm international i also had just one year to get my visa situation and all of that that's a whole lot of the thing yeah um, yeah i've had some friends go through that process i have one yeah. going through it right now but oh, yes yeah. uh-huh and i will go through it again next year because my three years are coming to an end oh i got my. my own visa and i'm on my third year next year it's not to reapply it's a whole thing but um, i i knew that i had to do that into go through that process it is you got to have a certain credits you got to have a certain things you got to have a certain publications um your name's got to be out there uh, you need to either pd or art direct and you can't be a pa on all of these things you know you need to either be like the head of department or the art director to get into um to make that work valuable and count so i knew i had that just for a, just a year so the two years of my schooling i met a lot of people and i networked a lot i re- i was going i was working for anything and everything that was coming my way and i didn't care about the money for the first two years i was like no i need to like yeah i need to make sure that i can live here and i need to make sure i have enough credits and then money will come you know so as soon as i graduated contacted everybody reached out to everybody um out of 10 usually i would say like two people respond you know mm-hmm. and uh, this one person responded to me um his name is Cody Fasina i learned a lot from him i worked a lot with him uh for the pa- for like one one and a half year into it and i learned a lot from him and like it's i think it's about finding that one person and who can see what you're doing and who can see that your work you know is 
good and you're worth something. And yeah. He takes that chance on you, and he took that chance on me. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and he was also production designer. Yes, okay. he is. Yeah, uh, kind of like almost like a mentor kind of role. Uh, yes, he yeah. was. He yeah. was for your yes. nice. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty much. Okay. I think my journey has been, and then since then I've consistently worked with him. I've worked with, and I've made my own relationships in the past two since the past two years. We stopped working together two years back, and then I've made my own relationships since then. And yeah, grown and evolved into where I am today. Okay, great, great. <laughs> no, it's all awesome. That sounds about right. Yeah, that uh, that's that. I can't really imagine how that ticking clock stress thing gets handled, but it sounds like you did it wonderfully with, uh, with all, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the expectation, which is weird about jumping into film and, and being in Los Angeles is the just getting onto set is the higher priority up front because you just need to meet people and let people know how awesome you are and then just keep doing that over and over again until you have your network like you did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I th- that's that's a I like the way you approached it. Money will come. Money will come. Money will Money come. Com- it comes though. It comes. Yeah. I think your work speaks for yourself, and it's in the end all about. Yeah, work. prioritize the work. Yeah. And the money will follow. Always. <laughs> and then through that, you learn how to negotiate better and all that kind of stuff. You do. Oh my God, that's a whole <laughs> thing. I remember like sending out messages to everybody saying, hey, you know, this is how much I charge for a day. And now when I look back, I'm like, hmm, growth. You know, like you come from a certain number to a different number. And I'm gotcha. like, yeah. yeah now I don't good. do that. Now I've, I think I'm better than... I'm I'm Because I have gone through that phase and I've gotten out of that phase you know so there are times when but then it's 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 really nice to see your growth from that to this yourself also and take a moment and be like okay all right I'm doing yeah. something right yeah okay, okay so I'm, I'm assuming that back in back in the day you were uh kind of I, I wouldn't say you know like the underselling is like hey i just want to be on this i don't charge that much to be on set yeah. bring me on and i'm awesome for what you're what you're paying for and then, uh, yeah, yeah, I know the more experience one gathers, the more it becomes on like, all right, what's like, I don't tell you what I'm worth. You tell me what your budget is and yes. then I'll let you know if I'm coming on or not. Yes, yeah. totally, totally. And and all, honestly, I do, um, again, like I, it's not about, it is about the money, but it's not about the money for me a lot of times. Yeah. It's about the project. So like um, the feature I did was an indie feature yeah. and I did it because I like the script. I love the people who I'm working with. And I think that's also important. Uh, it's important to like work with people you like for because you're working with them for a month. You become like a family, you know. It's weird to like not see uh, Mike. He was my art director on the feature. It's weird to not see him today because I've been seeing him constantly for a month till like day before, you know. Mm-hmm. And we ended and we ended our shoot with going for Doctor Strange. It was amazing. Uh, <laughs> of course, we had to do. We had yeah, to I saw Doctor Strange as well. <laughs> yeah, I was not. I was a little disappointed, but it's yeah. alright. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's but sad. yeah, no, I think it's it is um, it is very important to work with people you like as well, and work with people who think like you, who are like minded, who are driven like you. You know, and I I'm like grateful, and I feel very happy that I found. A couple of people like that who I love working with, who I think love working with me too, um, and were like they're on every project that I'm on. You know, like yeah. they would get a call. They would be the first people to get a call from me, saying like, "Okay, we're working this day." A friend of mine calls me his manager. He's like Rashi is my manager. She just calls me and tells me when works there. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're you. talking about your art team. My art team. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. It's important to have a good. <sighs> I get, I'm good jealous. Bunch of I'm so people. jealous. I'm so yeah, jealous. Yeah, we're a family. Well, cause like you know, cause I I mentioned off camera, I think yeah, cause I work a lot as a script supervisor. Mm-hmm. So you're your own team. I don't have. I don't. I don't get a. I don't get a hook other people. Uh, as in yeah. Or get. You know, it's more mm-hmm. of like I'm covering for somebody. Yeah. Or but I'm, I I I uh I look fondly upon those that have their their teams and their people. It's it must be nice. Yeah, and you can like feel it. You know, on this feature also, like Mike and I have known each other 
for so long it feels like it's been it's not been too long but we it feels like it's been so long and he's such an important part of i think every project that i do as well cuz like the times when i don't think about something and he would think about it and i know that he would be thinking about it, so my brain automatically does not think about those things okay yeah you know and it's good to have somebody like have your back and care for the project as much as you do and it's good to have somebody who also thinks that it's they're not they're not working for me they're working with me and we're working f- to make the project better in the end it's all about it's our names on the project and it's my art and it's his art that's there so like care for it as much as we and he does so it's uh, and it's and it's very visible on set too like there was a camera team o- of people and i could see that the cam op and the dp have worked together before because you can understand that they understand each other just by looking that that's what mike and i had too so it's like it's it's kind of precious to have that into because it is very visible to everybody around you as well so it's it's great yeah i agree i agree and we met another new person on the set as well who now has become a part of us we're like oh my god you're not going to be here with us so yeah yeah i think you always end up meeting new people on set and sometimes people match your vibe sometimes they don't yeah i mean that, they that, match they you keep them that's and that's the stick life together yeah 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 if it matches you stick together yeah and that's that's the sad i mean that's the that's the plus and minus of being in film production all together too yeah. is you just meet so many awesome people like you said you just became family with a whole you know not just your team but the full team like the directors the other camera people around there's i don't know how much yeah i so then you just want to work with all the cool people all the time but then you but you can't but you can't you can't <laughs> everybody's busy and everybody's doing life also together <laughs> yeah so yeah okay um i want to talk about and i guess like i'm always fascinated about process mm. i like to talk about you know just you know we we kind of skimmed over it a bit with there's pre-production there's building there's there's story there's then there's like actually when the thing is being shot there's a different there's a different uh, process for managing the set once it's built um so i get okay there and then we talked about two there's like music videos there's mm-hmm. commercials there's narrative and then there's short film there's mm-hmm. feature so there's there's, there's a whole there's a whole <laughs> thing and it's all so different I've done a live event. I've done a I've done a couple of music videos. I've done a couple of commercials. I just got out of a commercial like on fr- Friday, mm-hmm. yesterday. That was yesterday. And then n- I also have done a lot of short films. And the process for everything is so different. Yeah. Like starting from uh, music videos, you know, because um, that is where w- when I actually started working with Cody, I did a lot of music videos with him, and. a lot of it is about you get a you get a treatment from the director um and you get like 10 reference images and then off of those reference images you build something or you create something of your own it's either a location which is mostly set dressing or it's um, sometimes it's like oh let, can i can you build a yellow bedroom and that yellow bedroom can be whatever you want it to be you know so it's really fun to create uh a lot of times for music videos and commercials it's really fun to create a lot of surreal different sets which don't have to really make sense yeah um, you know it, it just got to look cool you tell me yeah this is got to look good you tell me make a yellow bedroom and i'll make you i'll make a yellow bedroom and it i think that was one of my favorite things that i designed you know at that time um yeah so for okay so you get some reference images from the director but there's a lot there's a lot of more creative freedom in the music video space like you said it doesn't there's it doesn't have to make sense yeah um, it doesn't have to make sense uh, yeah <laughs> it's just got to look cool yeah. so how i'm assuming i'm trying to see on how much information you're given on a music video and if you have the res- reference image it might just vary by director to yeah it, it varies have... it varies from director to director so i've worked with uh, um this director Cole Bennett a lot he's one of my favorites uh, that company was like our fam- you know we were a little family okay. the whole production company with us were a little family because we used to do every project that Co- Cole would do in LA and um 
um, the way he writes treatments versus the way other people write treatments are very different because he, I think, Cole, I think, knows exactly what he wants at every minute of the song and at every second of the song. So he would explain it so well that it doesn't confuse you. And then you'll send one person design and then be like, no, but can you do this, this, this? And then we'll do that. And then uh, that's where the conversations start versus um, a lot of other directors also they, everybody, I think, tries to give you four or five reference images for every particular set that they want, and then you add to that reference image, and you tell them, oh, but this can be done this way, and this can be done this way, you know, oh, if you want to shoot through a mirror, there is a two-way mirror that exists, which we can shoot from the other side of the mirror, which a lot of people don't know about, you know, so yeah, you're yeah. the person who steps in with those things which and you're stepping into you're stepping you're filling those gaps which they don't know how to exactly execute that yeah which and is add well, to it and make it better yeah and that's why that's job. why you're there yeah exactly what is the job so uh, but for music videos you mostly get a reference book off of which you they want to go through even for commercials mostly commercials are a little more specific music videos are very you you can go as crazy as you can uh, as crazy as you want with commercials you I think if you're building something for a commercial, you can go as crazy, but still sticking to their theme. Uh, versus if you're set dressing for a commercial, which is, by the way, set dressing is getting into a location and changing the space up according to how you want it to look. You know? yeah, so if okay. there's a couch and, a, and two things here, but this doesn't work for that story at this moment, let's bring in a different couch. Let's bring in, let's change this into a curtain or let's change this into a partition wall. Uh, that's set dressing. So, um, Commercials, when it's set dressing, it's very specific. So I was doing a commercial for Instagram and uh, we couldn't have, for one scene, they wanted these nostalgic photos, but we couldn't have uh, Polaroids in the photo because that's a different brand. So you can't really have a different brand in when you're shooting for a brand. So it's, yeah. a, whole, it's a whole thing of copyright and all of that and getting permissions and all of that so um, music videos and commercials are very much what you get you build off of that versus film I think is about you get the script and of course the director has their own lookbook and they have their own vision for every character um, but mostly what happens is they would send me the script I would create my mood board I would send it to them then we'll discuss it and then they'll be like okay no I see these and I I think my first meetings always with directors are about what colors do you see for this person? What, what, because wh colors are very important. Colors are, yeah. colors are what define, according to me, I think colors are what define a person as well. Like you can understand by what colors people are wearing, what kind of a personality they are, you know. Um, back at school, our teacher used to be like, you're either a square or a circle. Like, I'm a square. I don't know how, but she just looks at me and she says it. And I am square. I, I believe so. I don't <laughs> know the logic behind it, yeah. but I am a square. Uh, but you're either a square or a circle. And you're either like, if you're this color, you're like this. You know, yeah. I don't know. It yeah. defines you as a person. So I get it like rigid or smooth. I don't know. Yeah, rigid or like move flowing. You know, yeah. I'm a flowy <laughs> person. <laughs> well, that's not square. But square. I'm a square. You no. got you got your. Uh, I've got my. I like my lines. Your framework, I like my, yeah. Yeah, I like my lines and I like my angles, but I have also come to realize in the past, I think year, year and a half, when I'm designing sets, every time, it's it's different, right? When I'm talking to a commercial person, they look at my commercial work and they'll be like, "Oh, your work is so fun and colorful and so bright," and I never thought that my work was that, you know? Yeah. Because I, as a person, I'm not that. But if you do look at my work. It is very bright and colorful and fun. Versus my short and narrative work is very warm and at home and very natural. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I'm still coming to terms with the fun, colorful part of it, you know, right now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I think, I, I think it is, you know. But um, uh, the, so it's, it's, it's just, the process for everything is very different. And I... Uh, love all of them like it's difficult to like choose yeah. one you know well it's fun to mix it up it's fun too. to mix it up because I'm sure doing one over and over again could get boring yeah even if yeah it's just like alright well can I have some more freedom on this one yeah. and I want to just jump into a short yeah whatever yeah. the thing is yeah. yeah okay so what okay so that was music video and commercial. You did hint a little bit at the short film narrative space on uh, on that back and forth with you get the script, you break, you do your kind of breakdown, you send some stuff out, 
you receive some stuff back, you communicate that back and forth. Um, So then how does it go with talking about budget on like, (laughs) on like what a project needs air quotes to (laughs) accomplish the vision? Like how, how does, how I, I usually, so again, I think that's it, it works differently for everything, for music videos. Somehow they always have the money. I even for commercials, somehow they always have the money. They, yeah, commercial. Uh, sure. They have a lot of money. Uh, of course, they would always, and a lot of times what I like to do is I like to know what your budget is from the start so that if you tell me that, okay, I have, I have like 40K to do this much. And I'm like, but okay, then I'll give you what I can do in 40k. I won't give you what I can do in 60k. You know. Sure, sure. <laughs> sure. 40k, yes. 40k, yes. No, but no. I just did. I just finished a commercial actually, which was for this brand called Purse Pets. It's this purse brand for kids, and it's sold in Target and everywhere else. Um, and they had given me a 49k budget or something. But the design they wanted was 65K. So Mm. there was a lot of back and forth and there was a lot of, but you're not, if you want this creative, you are supposed to give me this. Otherwise you will not get this. But then, but then there's also, you know, people talk about creative solutions for things and like figuring it out and wanting to see what we can, where we can save and how we can save. And And I'm all about that, you know, like some of my really good friends in the industry are, producers and I'm really you have friends with directors but I think I'm better friends with producers because I like to I don't want to like I know that I don't want to like not uh, I, I don't want to over I, I don't want to put that on your head that oh yeah art's always going over budget or whatever oh you know? right right yeah that's a producer um, conversation yeah, yeah it's more of a producer conversation always so there was a lot of back and forth for this job itself and then she gave me 52 and I was like no I need 60 and I think I landed at 56, but I think communication is key with the budget. Uh, As things change with the director, you got to keep the producer in the loop and keep telling the producer that, hey, the director is demanding this. I want to say no, but how do I say no when they're saying that the client wants this and the creative is this and this is what we need? I know you don't have that much money, so maybe you step into this because I want to give what the producer, director wants always. I always want to give the director what they want. Sure. but uh, there are not always times. So you gotta, and then it's a, it's it's an effort from the producer, director, and myself to sit and figure out. Okay, let's cut this. We'll reduce this much money. Let's cut this. But I think I like to start with knowing what the number is. And sometimes the producers are like, "No, you tell me where it, where you want." So then I will go all crazy and I will do like the best design that I can do. Sure. You know, always I'm like, "Okay, so this design will cost you this much." Now let's cut back from that and let's see. Yeah. But usually the client ends up liking the most expensive one. Of course. Because it's, it's, so it's beautiful. Because it is beautiful. Exactly. But like, I think if you find that happy medium and communicating continuously with the producer that this is where I am, this is what it is, um, this got added and that's why this is happening, it's a lot of communication with the producer and then with your team. That, okay, not this, but this. Yeah. But this has changed, but this and this. <laughs> For sure. Because <laughs> uh, I know... I know I ha- I've seen it way too many times with because it that takes a lot of trust is is what that which is of course when you are able to bond with a producer or the director and that and that sort of thing because I know I've seen too many times where I, every it's tough on set okay set set life is hard all right because I know everybody is. <laughs> coming to the producer for what like for us to execute the vision we need this to execute it properly um of course creative solutions and everything but i know like let's just say the camera team or with the grips and the gaffers they're like if we want to light this the way that we want to light it we're going to need to rent this other thing and we need this we want steady cam for this and that's going to be an extra this and or dolly track we need these other grip what or even if it's like, oh, we got to black out this set and we don't have the proper things. This is how much it's going to cost to buy all the fabrics and block this out properly. And then... Yeah, it's all about communication. Yeah. I think it's, if you communicate and the producer says no, then having that no conversation with the director along with the producer is a good is a good thing, I think. Yeah. Just because 
just so you don't seem like because I I always want to do it. I'm like, yeah, I want to give this to you. And a lot of times the directors ask you, oh, and if we can do this, can we? And I'm like, I mean, it can be done, but I don't think I can do it. Yeah, <laughs> it can be done, but I can't. Done, but like, can you give me more money? <laughs> um. So yeah, and yeah. then again with with I think with narratives and with indie features as well. Like, you know, with the features that I just wrapped as well. um i had a certain budget we went a little over but again i was communicating that at every point and i was communicating that to the producers at every point that you know this is costing this this is costing it's not going in my pocket you know i'm doing it to make this you see how much prints yeah, cost yeah. and you see how much these things cost and like and they understand i mean all produ- i think a good producer always knows what it takes to make a fucking movie you know yeah. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> yeah uh, pardon my language but yeah you know what it takes to make a movie um and communication I no guess for sure i gu- i guess what i was what i was going to get to too is i've seen producers given given okay yeah. to a thing and then the person goes out and gets the thing but they buy like the most expensive version of the thing that they need to do and it's like well you spent 600 on this but me as a producer i've I know that there's you cheaper get it options into, yeah. for so then it's like well you got to take that back and yeah. why didn't you get this other thing instead of that and they're yeah. like well we wanted to do this and it's like no we don't have the b- so <laughs> I know it's always a, uh, the, the, no but I think I'm, I'm, I'm my my team and I are pretty good with uh, um getting trying to find cheaper solutions sure. because I've started working with like I started the work with working on a lot of short films so I don't compromise on the quality I think quality is the most important to me um Yes, cheap is one thing, but if it's cheap and bad quality, yeah. then it doesn't make sense. That's not the kind of art I want to put out there, right? Yeah. So quality matters a lot. You so if I'm getting a decent quality, which works for camera, which also works for the budget, best. Yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta weigh the. Uh, you gotta f- do the, this calculation in your head on how important this, this thing is uh, yeah. to being the highest quality if it's just just if it's just like a like a th- two second whip you know like a two second thing how important or how clean does that need to be versus something that's so much more in focus yeah we're gonna get some exactly. inserts on this thing exactly. and it's gotta be put it's gotta be perfect yeah yeah we had to buy like these bunch of um sex toys for our film <laughs> this time yeah uh, and we spent like six seven goes. six we spent like six hundred dollars and just we rented a few things and then we purchased a few things and then because we spent so much money we're like oh can we go return them and then we found out that it's illegal to return them oh sex now toys specifically yes yeah. it's illegal to return sex toys specifically so we now they're in storage for the next what one what do we do for the next <laughs> one <laughs> which we need this you'll time. be pitching oh uh, we need something to go in this corner i have i have, <laughs> I have uh, <laughs> Oh my god. No, it's not a, uh, it's not super common. But we try to return everything. I think every purchase <laughs> we try to return. Okay. How does that go? Oh, it sometimes you get shit. I think because it's LA, a lot of um targets and home goods know that it's a studio return and tra- target has this thing where if the return is over 200 um you can come on a Tuesday morning, I can give you an appointment and then otherwise they're like, "Oh, if it's a studio return, you can come at this time." And a lot of times when I go to returns, I'm just like, "Oh, I'm from India. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm not from this country. I don't know the rules of this country." You play into you play pull the India card. I do. I really do. <laughs> and then you make up stories. That's how you learn how to like. Oh, um, my boyfriend didn't like it, or I was redecorating and my roommate hated this, or you know. Yeah, you and gotta be some people strategic are nice. about it. Yeah, you gotta be strategic. You can't take. Ten of the same kind of things at one target. They split it up into different targets. You know. <laughs> Gee, so much work. Ah, so I mean, much. that stresses me out. I know I can't pull that off. I've, yeah. I've tried before, and I'm just like, <laughs> I show up to the counter, and I'm like, yes, I know, I use this in a film. I'm so sorry. Can I return this? <laughs> like, you know, I feel like I just, I just fall apart immediately. Yeah. I used to be that person. I have done that a couple of times where I'm like going with somebody. Uh, we were at this office depot, right? And we had to we were returning stuff for like almost thousand dollars. And um, I went and I was like, oh yeah, we got this thing for an NGO, and you know that didn't work out. So we're returning it. And then this lady asked me which NGO. <laughs> I looked at my friend and I was like, Andrew, <laughs> what, what, which NGO was it? What was it? And then he would come up with something. 
Because oh, sometimes you. people like actually get involved in the conversation that you're trying to have. You know, like, but I was not prepared for this. I didn't have the answer for this. Yeah, it's like um, genuine curiosity ge- versus yeah. like uh, versus interrogation. Yeah, yeah. I think some mostly it's genuine curiosity. You know, why people they don't care. Like, they, don't, they don't. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, do they they do, they care? yeah, I don't. I feel bad for them though. Sometimes, but it's okay. Yeah, their bosses are getting on them about yeah. accepting too much studio studio returns. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So that's a little bit of budget talks. I'm still okay. I guess I guess another reason why I ask too is I, like I was saying, I've directed a few indie features. I script supervise a lot. I've directed a lot of short films, but I rarely have a budget to play with when I am creating. Um, so on this, I have an upcoming short film in which we we I got a budget for the first time essentially, and I'm in my head. I probably talked to you some more about off camera, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my head. I'm just like, all right, for let's say like a four day short film, I'm trying to figure out expectations for what to provide this art team. Like we're shooting out of state, it's not Los Angeles based, um, and. Uh, the line producer builds a preliminary budget and I'm also producing too. So I got to see the numbers and have the back and forth conversations there. But when it comes to art, I'm looking at the numbers and I'm like, if an art person looks at this, they are, I don't think this is doable on the budget that's given, but I don't know what the ideal budget is. And without looking at the script or anything, it's hard to know, but, um, what how do i know <laughs> i think i think a good art director or a good production designer can read the script and tell you how much it would cost okay yeah so easy yeah really like uh, get advice because i've done that for a few friends of mine like i'm happy to like read okay and tell cool you exactly how much i think it would cost um and again i think los angeles is very vast and very Los Angeles has a lot of options and a lot of things and for everything that's not available there is something else that's available somewhere else versus um, New York I've worked in New York I've worked in Miami there are smaller industries everybody knows everybody not every place will have multiples of everything you know here if you find something at WB very likely you will find the same similar a similar looking thing or similar thing at Omega or another prop house or at Universal you know versus Different places have just those limited things yeah. which you have to play with and which you have to find. Yeah, because we're going to New Mexico. We're Ooh. going to uh, Albuquerque, okay. which is a which is a growing film town. I mean, yes, yeah, they have a lot of Netflix really there, is. but I don't know what their situations are. I haven't looked into it, but yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, of, yeah. getting a local probably getting yeah. a local to do that or having a team from here, um, maybe go down figure it out or i mean research honestly is all on the internet so uh googling getting <laughs> but getting a good yeah. good art director who can like immediately tell you okay this is how much what yeah. i like to do is I, I would like to read the script it all builds in my head like even with this feature you know i would uh, i told the producer initially that you know this is how much i would need and then they were like okay but we have this and i was like okay but like wait let me show you and then i showed them and then they understood and they were like yeah okay uh, cool, you get this much, you you let me give you this much, I'm okay this much, and I was like, okay, that's perfect, you know? Yeah. So I think it's a matter of that conversation, just finding somebody who would be able to tell you, like, like the highest of what it would cost, and then figuring out yeah. Albuquerque in New Mexico rates. I think in terms of labor, it might be cheaper than LA, but in terms of materials, it might be more, you know? Yeah. Because materials here ideally to build a to build a 10 by 10 room or like you know there's sometimes when people ask me okay how much how much would it cost to build a build a plexiglass box and cost like four to five thousand dollars you know i oh know my. that because yeah. i know how much a sheet of plexi costs and then to put it together labor blah 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 etc i could give you numbers of the top of my head yeah. but yeah, i think a good a good uh, art director or a good production designer would know um off the top of their head how much it would cost and with some research you should be able to understand that number yeah no that sounds great (laughs) cool um okay so now we can go 
back a little bit in time. Maybe. There's there's two things I want to get. This is this is I feel like a simple question here, but how do you feel about uh I guess it doesn't have to be Cal Art specifically, but film school experience um on like it, it's the thing that got you here in the first place, but outside of that is the yeah. I think I I think I know what you're saying. The classic question. The classic question. Um, I don't think schools don't help. Of course, there's uh, the, the the things that I learned at CalArts, which I only know because of that. You know, I, um, I the reason I chose CalArts was b- because it was a more art based school. But I was a little, I was a little. Um, um, I don't know what the right word is, but I was a little. I wasn't very aware there was such a theater based school, and was so. Oh, okay. um, I was n- because I was in India. I didn't know. Uh, and I'm I'm going to according to me I'm going to this film school where I'm g- gonna do like production design for film and stuff. Yeah. But I didn't realize there was such a theater based school. And then my first semester, I remember I was I was a little, uh, I, I was a little, um, I was con- contemplating whether it was the right choice because because I got into AFI, which is only a film school. Yeah. Uh, which is like one of the best in the country, and I was like, I didn't choose that because of scholarship. Uh, but that, did I make a wrong decision? Because, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think I did. I Honestly, think so. I am so but happy I chose CalArts because it taught me so much that I had no idea about. It taught me about painting. It taught me about model making. It taught me about I know how to like stop motion animate. I know how to. I've worked in a. I've worked in a um, themed entertainment firm um, from through CalArts. And I, because when I moved here, I had come with a full, like, okay, I want to do film and this is what I want to do. But because CalArts opened so many opportunities and options for me, I tried everything. I worked in, I worked for this theater show in the, in the Huntington Gardens for like a month. I was like a stage hand uh, for the art department. And I was doing that um, um, for a month. I was working in a, in a, a themed entertainment firm and I was doing AutoCAD for them uh, I, and then the next semester so for one semester I was doing AutoCAD for them like softwares for them and next semester they wanted me to come back and intern again um, but I told them that you know I want to be more in the creative part because they were building this Pokemon ride for this uh, for this uh, theme park in Spain and which was a Lionsgate thing and I was like I want to be a part of that because I love Pokemon I'm a huge fan yeah. I was that kid I was like I used to watch every episode yeah. the first one you know like when it came out the first the time the classics the classic one the Pikachu and yeah, yeah that's you know? great I have socks in all of them but um, yeah so I really wanted a part of the, to, to be a part of that creative team but then CalArts has this program with USC like an integration program with USC School of Film because USC does not have a lot of production designers. They take designers and costume designers, costume and production designers from CalArts, and they have this exchange program. So I luckily got into that class uh, through a friend, Kato, and uh, I was art directing for her for that class. And the professor, our production design mentor, uh, it used to be like every Wednesday from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We used to be at USC. So we used to leave from Santa Clarita at like 6 a.m. because traffic, LA traffic. Cal Arts is uh, in Santa Clarita? Cal Arts is in Santa Clarita. Ooh, it's north. Yeah, it's far. It's far. Um, so, but the professor there was, uh, he's production design for the original Batman and Robin. He's production design for a lot of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger films. He's production design for... Um, Alvin and the Chipmunks, you know, and mm-hmm. he's standing in front of me and I'm like, oh my God, you're like my hero, you know, and he's, he, he would teach us and then there was like story time with Richard, it was a whole class where the second half of our class was he would show us his film and then he would pause at every point and he would tell us what went behind the scenes of that particular scene. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. And that's when I was like, this is what I want, you know, like this is where, because I tried everything and I didn't want to close every option for myself because I was like, I didn't know that there is eight different things that I can do with my degree and my knowledge. And I tried everything, but then I think my heart lies in film and filmmaking. So I didn't do that uh, creative. They they were with my quota when I was interning with the theme theme entertainment firm. They were ready to move me into the creative part of that Pokemon ride. But because I got into this USC class, mm. I didn't take that. 
and i was like okay let me try this out because this is one thing that i've not tried out yet yeah. and i tried that out and i was like this is what i want to do yeah no okay this is where i belong <laughs> <laughs> no that sounds great yeah, yeah i think it sounds like you made the right decision to cuz you you were you had explained it earlier as you were weighing the money thing first you had a scholarship to this one afi is already more expensive by default yeah. way expensive way. so yeah. yeah i'm sure yeah i think the tuition is more or less similar but it's more about i'm living in santa clarita it's a village so <laughs> it's a village uh so you're also paying less or you're not there's not too much to do there you're like you know you're just overall you're paying less uh, plus 50% scholarship is a huge, yeah is a huge one dollar is 75 indian rupees so when you're earning when when you're coming from that from s- into 75 i'm paying whatever it costs you into 75 you know yeah right um so of course that was a huge thing as well yeah but so i think i made i i think i made i think so i right think so for too. sure I mean the objective was to get you here and get you started and yeah. that's what it did. But I was just cu- yeah. And um, even along with that, you know, film schools help help to a point where but it's all about what you make out of that connection, you know. It's all about like tomorrow I still text, I would still email Richard, like the professor from USC, you know, just be yeah. like, "Yeah, let's go and meet for uh food and let's meet for coffee, you know, and let's um and I would still that times when I felt stuck we're doing things and i would be like will you be up for zooming and on this day and he's he's spoken to me no, nice. you know yeah. so it's also keeping up and building that keep building that relationship and keeping that up i remember i called him last year at some point and i was like richard i feel very stuck and i don't know in this and he's like i give your example to every student here you're so young this is what you, and like it's just nice to hear that from somebody who comes from such a big He's like he's retired now. Yeah, he's done he's, he's done, done some he's, he's done, done some, some stuff. He's done some great work. Yeah. And it just feels nice to have somebody that that experienced look at your work and be like, "Okay, no, you're doing good. Mm-hmm. Thank you." <laughs> so that's all you need. Yeah, Validation. it's just a reminder, reminder that uh you're doing fine. You're doing Yeah, you're, you're doing you're fine. It's fine. It's like, "But I'm stuck." No, you're doing fine. Yeah. Chill. And I'm like, "Okay, thank you. I am." <laughs> <laughs> uh Okay. I want to ask um I was reading your your bio on your website. Um I believe I wanted to kind of ask about the statement that you have here and get an idea of what you mean cuz I want to open my mind a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You talk about how through production design and the work that you do, you want to I don't know, kind of help with how like we're redefining the way we look at cinema is something that you said specifically yeah. how, at what how let's just say me director brain eddie over here how how what is how do we define how do we redefine how we look at cinema what are what are some things that you think about with different approaches or um you know, i guess What does that mean? That's such a good question. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> it's a good question. Um I think I think when I say uh redefine the way we look at cinema it's more about I think I think currently with the world we're in um everything that is done or everything that is visible has too many uh opinions I guess. and everybody can <laughs> oh. everybody can comment on every single thing yeah which good. i don't think is a bad thing at all uh, but social media yeah yeah social media it's pretty bad but it's i mean i don't I, i've gotten a lot of work from instagram okay so i have no complaints from social media in general but i just feel like uh, i just feel like we're living in a world where uh, because it's so easy to uh, comment on every single thing you don't understand what actually goes behind the be, be behind what people are doing of course something that makes and art itself is so subjective right so when i look at a certain things i because of production design when i look at a movie now i look at it completely differently i'm like okay no but that that candle in doctor strange the other day when like there's a scene where um 
uh, where Stephen, Stephen, like he's my friend. Uh, Stephen Strange. Switch, yeah. Stephen Strange. When he switches, uh, he suddenly does this, and all the candles are on. There was one candle that was not on, and I was like, "That candle is not on." And Mike stood at me like, "Stop it!" They you had, know, they so had like, a faulty candle. Yeah, they shocks. did. They did. But I'm the person who looks at that. You know, somebody else, like a DP, would probably look at the camera movement. I was watching the candles too. I didn't notice one didn't go off, but, but I was I like, are these real flames yeah. or how are they lighting? I was really yeah, confused yeah, as to yeah. how they did it. But. Yeah, yeah. I think they were real flames and one of them was not on. I think so. Uh, but yeah, see, so I think I want, and a lot of times when I um, notice something, when I'm looking at the, when I'm looking at a movie and I'm, when I notice something in art, um, I think that that's not a very well, good job done. I feel like art should be invisible in a way. and invisible, but still be beautiful. Invisible but beautiful to people. Yeah. You know? And I'm like all about, yeah, let's, just, let's show this thing off. You know, like, um, have you seen Knives Out? Yeah. yeah. It's been so a bit, but I've seen been, it. It's been a while. It's been a while. It just comes to my head right now, but there's this whole, that time, that in that movie of like taking screenshots of a certain thing, so I'm like, oh my God, so beautiful. But it's been, throughout the movie, it's not been too much on the nose for me. And I guess that's what I mean when I say that a lot of times, uh, there are certain movies that I, 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 there are certain Bollywood movies that also I grew up with. The movies that I grew up with were not good art, were just not sure, good art, sure. you know. Um, but again, like when I'm looking at that movie, it's more about nostalgia for me than art, you know. Yeah. So I guess like I guess like when I say that, um, let's redefine the way we look at cinema. Um, I think we should try to be a little more uh, understanding of what the other person is trying to show, rather than me, me, me. And this is what I think about it, you know. And I, I think which is a little lacking. Okay. Okay. Overall. So yeah. Just I hear that. Uh, I mean, I hear that a lot for sure. Yeah. With, with somebody will criticize the look of the film or or decision made or what they should have done instead, and they're not really thinking. You don't even it. know what went behind it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, like maybe well, see interviews and then comment. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, that's still yeah. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Have you seen um, everything? Everywhere? No. Oh my God! All Everybody at once. on my feature was talking about it every single day. I don't mean to interrupt, but I have to watch it. I think today is gonna today or tomorrow. I have to go, watch it. Go see it. I know. I have to watch it. Oh my God. Uh, the only reason I bring it up, well, you'll love it. Of course, you'll love it. Yeah. Um, it's a much better multiverse movie than Doctor Not Strange straight. was. <laughs> Uh, which is which is lovely to see from a more indie indie budgeted level movie versus the I don't know ten time budget yeah. Doctor Strange, uh, but I don't know. I guess I mean you're gonna watch it by default in terms of the production design of it. But I know I was in love with the production design in that movie. Yeah. A, I know, a plus. I've heard, I've heard. Everybody plus. around me has told me that, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I want, I think I want to know more that. about how they did it, but you'll have to. We'll we'll chat more about that later after you see it. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it just makes you want to do better is all, is all when I watch it. I know. Yeah. Okay, so that's redefining the way we look at cinema. Yeah. So it's not, yeah, it's a little bit less literal than I was expecting. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you also mentioned on, I don't know, for some, I really enjoy looking at people's Instagram bios mm -hmm and seeing what people put in there to kind of define who they are and what, what it says. I know you end your bio with saying one story at a time. Yeah, always. One story at a time. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah, so what is, what, why is that there? What, is, what does that mean? That means that, that I, think, I think life, <laughs> as we grow and as we evolve, your story keeps changing every time. Mm -hmm. And... I think I think the beautiful part about working in this industry is that you create get to create one story at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even at uh, even on a set, even on one set, even when there are, I mean, even on one particular production, if there are ten different sets, it's still different stories at a time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When I'm doing a music video, uh, when they say yellow bedroom, and when they say a pink closet, the two stories. So it's one and one. But at one time, you're just doing one of them. Okay. So I just feel like it's it's all about, like, this is a story right now. You know? This is one story at this time. Yeah. So I feel like one story at a time 
in life. Yeah. And I get to do that for a living. I think no, it's a, I think it's yeah, that makes that makes sense. It's a nice outlook on life in general. Mm-hmm. I think that helps with um I mean, it's something that I do on the regular as well, not necessarily with that specific thought, but it's a similar thing with a just simplifying a complicated, like you can overcomplicate things. You can, you can get kind of bogged down with overthinking about whatever, but then you simplify it down to like what it is at the core and you turn it into the one story and you're like, okay, well, it's not as complicated as I thought it was. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it is what it is. And yeah. I'm a way, uh Like, literally on this course, <laughs> I guess. If I say something, I really mean it. I wouldn't, like, put something out there, which I don't believe in, I guess. And, like, I've started, I think I've also come to a point right now in my career where I'm not doing every project because I have to do it, you know? I'm, like, trying to be more cautious about what I do. Be more I choosy. I can be more choosy and picky, thankfully. That's great. That's it a great position, yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I'm there at this point, you know, I would do things that I want to do and I want to I want to show. Yeah. As well, so. It's got to be exciting in a way and well, yeah, like you had talked about it with a feature. It wasn't really that wasn't for the money, it was yeah. for the team, it was for the story, it was for yeah. a different opportunity of getting mm-hmm. to express something that uh, was exciting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the dream. Um cool. I am curious if we're kind of I can I can feel the winding downness of the conversation. We're ki- we're kind of there. We're, we're kind of we're kind of there. there. Um <clears throat> I guess to kind of take where we are now and loop back all the way to the beginning of time. Well, not beginning of time. <laughs> our, all the way when you were <laughs> born, Rush, you know. <laughs> so a little bit, a little bit how how much did art play into like your childhood and your life growing up like how uh okay so <laughs> it's yeah. again yeah it yeah. is so it is a, i think it's a full uh, circle in a lot of ways uh, my dad still tells the story to everybody that i was a year old or i was like 6 months 7 months old when i saw my first movie in a theater and I, you know how like when you take kids for a movie, they would cry or like kids cry sure, in yeah, general. They're, they're a pain. But I was that kid who would get up during every song because all Bollywood movies are musicals. So I would get up during every song and I would dance and then I would sleep, and then I would get up again during every song and dance and sleep. So Cute. I think that that was my first, and I was uh, first six, eight, eight months into being born, and like my parents have been huge movie buffs they would go for like first day for shows like that's a thing first day for show is a thing so like friday the movie releases in the morning you go for the show or in the evening you for the, but you has to be a friday the day it releases you know so like it was a huge thing at my house my dad his friends my neighbors me my friends everybody used to go for a movie first day for show was a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and i come from mumbai mumbai is a place where like everybody comes to make their dreams into reality. Like, Mumbai is like the US of India, you know? So for India, every everywhere around India, people would yeah, it's come like the, to Mumbai. It's kind of like the LA. It's like, kind of the LA for yeah. India, yeah. So, no, I was saying US for the world, you know? How, like, US oh. is for the world. Like, everybody in the world... Like, I'm here, okay? You see? Sure. Like, everybody in the world gets attracted to US because of education, because of opportunities, because of things. I think Mumbai is that for every Indian who does not have access to get out of India, you know, because yeah. not everybody can afford it. So, um, I come from that place, I come from that city. It's a city which is alive at all times. It has art everywhere. We were colonized by the Britishers, but that also means that uh, that the reason why all of my education is in English, and that's why I can speak, you know, I've gotten that a few times here that oh your English is really nice and I'm like yeah I was colonized for years and years and years you know oh my. yeah my English is nice because I learned in English <laughs> mm-hmm. all my life but um, but just being um, coming from a city that is that beautiful around you it has its own like even the I went back home in February this time after two and a half years and even though it was different it was still the same you know because like what the city brings to you is, it's an emotion. That city is an emotion. Yeah. And that emotion is art. Because 
it's the heart of bollywood it's the heart of uh, architecture it's the heart of business as well it's the financial capital and it it was where uh, things were made for the queen in the start and like architecture in a certain part of mumbai is very um, colonial and british and art deco so i come from i i come from that so i think growing up that was or oh, i used to draw a lot not very good at it um i used to color i i wanted to be a fashion designer at one point mm-hmm. um uh, cuz you're so close to the industry right there you know like you see tv actors at a regular basis just in coffee shops around you um and i think because of that also you get so comfortable with being around around people with or who are like famous who like everybody knows you know sure sure um so yeah i think art in that form has always been in my life and then architecture happened so that's another form of art and then i remember during architecture my final year project i wanted to make a theme park and i guess that's how like a theme park i feel is okay. a standing set forever you know standing set for Ever. oh yeah 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 you know theme park is that it's like a standing thing where people come in do their thing move on come yeah <laughs> right right it's great <laughs> so um it's always been a part of my life and i think the end goal that i have with what i want to do essentially like 10 years later or 15 years later is have my own film school in india okay uh, wow because there's no film school in india and india is so big that's weird because they have yeah. so much film yeah exactly i think the film school there is only for directors or producers not producers only for directors or cinematographers there's nothing for art there's nothing for costume pd like all the other 20 departments that exist because i think for everybody um, i don't think people know what kind of depart- what goes behind for making yeah, you no, know and you, what kind of departments yeah. is it like script supervision is such an important thing but like i don't know if people know that people know director producer yeah director producer dp That's actor an actor know. actor an actor yeah exactly i'm just like yeah cuz i i i know i i had to i was pursuing film for like five years before i even learned what a script supervisor yeah. was yeah <laughs> so. yeah it takes in but a script supervisor is such an important part of film it's true <laughs> you it's know true. that i do, I do everything i'm not looking at the ca- yeah, yeah literally you're looking at the light you're looking at the art because this our script supervisor for this film b she's awesome she uh sometimes is like uh rashi uh, how do you feel about that and, I, and there are times when i don't look at that and i'm like thank you for like looking at that and like care, you know yeah so uh it's just people don't know what all the departments are Well, why did I start this conversation? Well, you're saying because there's no film school in India. There's no film school in India. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my God, Go. my goal. So yeah, I think my goal in life is because I am fortunate and I'm lucky to be able to afford to come here and do the education yes. that I can. You know, not everybody can do it, but there's a lot of talent that we have, and I wanna I wanna open something like AFI back home. Trying to I wanna collaborate with everybody I know here to be able to come there and give lectures and sure. to be able to collaborate with me. But I really do wanna open a film school. I think like I'll feel like I've succeeded in life if I do that. You know, you know. Yeah, giving giving 70, back to yeah the, to my again country. the full circle. Yeah, just giving it back to the country for sure. I I I I know I I I I will do it. Yeah, I will do it. yeah. Manifestation. <laughs> Start yeah, putting it out there in the world since like last year. I'm like. This is what I want to do. Yeah, you can. Ten years you, later, you can, you can do. Invest. You can probably do that whenever you wanted. Really, in yeah. reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been in talks with a few people, and yeah, nothing, nothing solid yet. But I, yeah, I'm putting it out there. Okay, so you grew up around art. You grew up in the hustle bustle. Of but nobody in my family knows anything about art. Like I'm the only person in my okay. whole family from my dad's side and my mom's side. They like watching movies. They like, but they're all like. engineers doctors yeah. like the typical they're, they're normal they're normal people. people they're normal people <laughs> i'm the crazy one <laughs> yeah they are normal people so when did art really did you were you always artist in the family like were you all, you said you were drawing it was bad you said you were <laughs> you're going into not really <laughs> you know i don't know i don't think i was always the artist in the family I was always the person who um I was always the person who was very out there and very open to like every, like I want to know I want to know and I want to see whatever. Mm-hmm. And then 
and then because architecture happened because I like drawing and I didn't want to study a lot. <laughs> that was gonna be easy, and I could draw. Yeah, and I can draw. Okay. And like I don't need to learn any. For sure. <laughs> you, I really, it was that you know, being completely honest. Okay. Um, easy. Turns out I'm good at it. <laughs> so like it's great. You're good at it. You loved it. <laughs> yeah. And you bounced off of that and in, into where you are now, which is, is an extension of architecture. I think everything is yeah, architecture in the world. Yeah. And it's just it's just uh, yeah. interesting about the the bathroom thing too that you started off with as well, with um, the toilets. Yeah, we only do that. In the <laughs> <stuff. It's crazy. laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. I have. Uh, I'll just meant okay. One more question. Yes. Um, and this is has to do with set life. Again, I don't know how this is for art department specifically. I hear things. Um, there's, you know, wrap days, there's prep days, there's building, depending on the, the stuff. But how do you feel about, um, like, the 12-hour workday or... Um, so I started out when I was here, when I had to start out with the with my world and I guess that's how it happens for most people when you're like learning and when you don't know what you're doing and when you're getting to know people you're okay with whatever <laughs> yeah yeah you're like please <laughs> you I'll, I'll do game. as many hours as I can I, I worked for like I've, I've been on a set for a music video where I was for Nicki Minaj where uh, we did 22 hours and it was it was like it's that's a story to that's tell. That's torture. It really is. It really is a torture. But it's a story to tell, right? Sure, like I, I talk sure. about. You do it I once, talk fine. about it too. Yeah, you do it once. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of over twelve-hour days being on music videos in the start. I've done a lot of that, and I think when you're starting out, also, uh, it's great money. You get double time after twelve, so you earn it's not more. Worth it. It's not worth it. I to I agree now, but like yeah. when you're starting out, right? When you're starting out, when you're like learning about people. When you're understanding, um, I didn't mind that honestly because I did that even in India, and you I didn't really get paid for it in India. Um, so I was doing 16-hour days in India, and I was not as an intern, so I was like earning bare minimum. Um, and here I was doing 16-hour days, but I was feeling valued, and I was feeling like, okay, yeah, no, your time is worth something, you know. Sure. Uh, which was nice. Uh, but I would I would prefer to do ten. I, I've I've worked on commercials with company moves, which have been ten hour days. Uh, with one of my f my really one of my favorite commercial directors, um, with Stadium, his name is Sammy Mosho. Um, I think when a team and when a director and when the crew knows exactly what they're doing and when it's going, I think it's an easier day versus yeah. when you don't have enough time to prep. I think it's a tougher day when. When the director is not exactly clear on what they want, when the client's not exactly communicative about what they want, I think it's a more difficult day. But like, I'm here for everything. Yeah, at this point, I'm here for everything. Maybe at like maybe five years down the line, I'll be like, ah, no. But yeah, no, I don't think I would prefer not doing sixteen-hour days. Now, what I try to do is, if I know I'm getting into sixteen-hour days, I would try to have a different crew after twelve. Oh, you so can that, rotate so out a little bit. Crew, yeah, so that my crew is not overworked. But then I I make sure that I ask everybody that I work with. Um, I make sure that I ask them and I'm like, okay, tomorrow's going to be a long day. It'll probably be 16 hours. Are you okay with that? You know, and most people are okay with that because some, because it's not every day that that happens, especially with music videos, I guess it happens a lot when you get into 16 hour, 20 hour, tw not 20, 16 hour days. Um, sometimes you get into 22, uh, but with music videos, it does happen, um, a lot that you get into 16 hour days, but. I, I guess, again, it's about, like, yeah. talking to your crew and if somebody wants to leave, they're free to leave, you know? Right. And I am very much about taking care of my crew first. Like, of course, yeah, I'm doing, we're, do, we're working with the director and producer, but if my crew's not okay with it, you don't, they're not okay with it. Yeah, them, safety you know? first. Safety first of my crew. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's under your control. Yeah, yeah. exactly. What's in my control, so. Okay. But I've got a good network yeah of people that these two uh then these two american boys who i love one's caleb and i already spoke about mike the two of my people mm -hmm. that my first call for every single thing that i do we heard caleb and mike caleb and mike 
Hey, you guys available? We're shooting uh, <laughs> Nicki Minaj. No, I'm out. I'm out. I'm busy. I'm busy I'm that busy, day. I'm busy. <laughs> um, I tried to say no to those kind of things too. You know, I can read into, like now I'm in a place where I can like see where, how this production might go. You can. Just understanding with the experience. So I read into it. You can almost just tell by how they reach out to you in the first yeah. place. It's like, are you frantic and yeah. bad at responding to texts and yeah. you're, not sell- you're not telling me anything? Um, yeah. No. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Because I always wonder about, like, I know, I know the thing that always gets crazy on, like, last days of certain locations is wrapping out sets within, like, they don't, like, production doesn't want to send art into OT, but they have to wrap out a whole a whole set after, yeah. and, and you're communicating with them on how much time you need, but. Sometimes you go, like, let me bring my guys tomorrow. You know? Yeah, ideally. Yeah, know, it'll be a half day and it'll be lesser people versus but, but, it'll be eight people right now in OT and lesser productivity. But then they have know? to pay for another day at the yeah. at the space and they're yeah. like, we don't want to do that yeah. even though it'd be safer and better and yeah. more productive. Yeah. So I always feel for art because I know I, I'm... I'm the first... I'm, I'm usually the last person. Like as a script soup, I'm the last person to set. What? I get like delayed yeah, calls. Yeah, you get you get delayed calls. True, exactly. Because like yeah. I don't need to be there we're while you're setting We're always the first up. and the last. And first then, and the last. And then I'm the first person to leave too. I'm like, we're wrapped. Bye-bye. Fold up and walk out. Yeah. So I, I feel for um, the people the we, people that have to... Yeah, Art and G&E mostly are like the two departments who are like there till the end. Yeah, 100%. Much. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, even with wrap out days and stuff, it it can get tricky. With yeah. we need more prep than what you're giving us. We need more wrap than what you're giving us. And yeah. it gets there've crazy. been times when Caleb has done this for me. You know, where we're shooting to like two a.m. and then next day is Friday and we need to return the truck. So you, we need to return everything in the truck. So he would like go back home at three and get up again at like seven and start his day. And I'm like, <sighs> let's not do that anymore. Don't you do know, that. and don't we've do stopped that. doing that. We used to. We we've done that. And I don't say it proudly at all. I hate that. And yeah. he hates that. You know, we both don't like it. But also we care about the art and we care about what's happening. But like at yeah. this point, we're just like, sorry, no. Yeah. We will do this later. But also it like, you know, it takes time to come there with the industry being so big but so small. Everybody knows everybody. And like, it's always about... And it's like a lot of jobs are about word of mouth you know like yeah. you tell somebody that oh yeah I worked with this PD it was great um, and then you're like oh no no but that PD did this or no no you know there's always yeah. and I, I I also think like coming to terms with that that not everybody is going to like you not everybody not you won't like everybody either and not everybody is going to like you and then the people who call you back call you back every time you know like they're friends of mine the producer friends of mine who I'm really good who I have good relations with, who I know would call me if they know that there's a job for me, you know, even mm-hmm. if I say no to them once when I can't do it. So it's, it's, it's I, I feel very grateful to have built that relationship with a few people that I have and I'm like continuing to do more. I think it's a, it's going to be relationship building for life. That's, that's, know? that's it. That's, the, yeah. that's, that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Just be a good person, be good at your work. And you will attract good energy. Is what I believe in. One hundred percent. You you're, give out positivity, you will get positivity. You're preaching to the choir over here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So I guess, lastly, 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 simple question <laughs> for people that want to, or I guess this is kind of this kind of, but for people that want to keep keep in the know or follow the stuff that you got, because you're pretty good at posting about the I jobs think. you're on and. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, where can people, you have your website, you have your Instagram, you know, if, you, if you want to tag that. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, Rashi underscore designs is my Instagram. There have been times when like uh, this one um, stage manager who I'm very good friends with, Nathan, he owns like Studio 60 and a lot of stages here. Uh, I think the first time I was shooting there, the second time I was shooting there, he's like, you're Rashi Designs, right? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm famous. <laughs> so Rashi Designs is my Instagram. I am uh, pretty good at, I'm tr- yeah, it's still a lot. There's so much that I've not posted, but I'm pretty good at posting on Instagram. Um, and it is the easiest way to reach me, I think. Mm-hmm. I try I try to look at my messages every I don't know, nice. every yeah. other day, yeah. once, a, once in two weeks. That's you the, know. That's once every two weeks? Sorry, two, twice in <laughs> a week is what I meant. Twice in a week, I try to look at my uh, request message requests as well. Okay. And I reply okay. to anybody who I think is 
you know wanting to work or wanting to know and wanting to understand how it is i'm like yeah um email is a great way to reach me rashi jain design at gmail and then all my work is on my website and you well. got a lot of work up there you do on graphic design you do you it's know. because of architecture yeah for yeah, sure yeah i it's know gra- awesome. I d- model cad yeah mm-hmm. all the great stuff and you yeah. and i paint and i yeah but i think i'm i'm the best at art directing and yeah it's design. it's all it's all, it's all it's like all interconnected it's all interconnected this is what I'm, i do the best and i'm sure you get asked too it's like we need some just art for the wall and you're like i've got art yeah i've got art yeah true yeah yeah oh, i've seen I've that happen used, plenty i have i've made this uh ganesh like a, a four feet by four feet ganesh statue ganesh is an Indi- indian god i've made this statue i foam carved it i used it for my feature right now I use it for different things and then there is this lamp that I have in my house which is featured in every single thing that I want <laughs> pretty much of it it's bring it's bring uh, the Easter lamp. egg of myself like yeah. that lamp is my personal lamp yeah <laughs> it's in a lot of things a lot of shots and everybody that loves it that's very cool mhm great i think that's it oh my god and thanks again thank you for having me for sure Great. Great. All right. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>